Welcome everybody and it's the last series for this year of Kotlin for the server side. It's actually the fourth edition. We hosted a few other editions uh, previously this year in February, in May, in summertime or was it in September? And now it's the final series for this year. We have three webinars coming up. One is today with Alexei about Kotlin DL library. Uh, the other one about Arrow KT is coming up tomorrow. So functional programming in Kotlin with Arrow KT is going to be tomorrow uh, with Alejandro and Simon. And next week, I'm going to be talking about KTOR with Exposed. And uh, if you missed it, uh, or if you would like to see uh, the the previous episodes of from from the previous series you can actually check out our youtube channel kotlin uh, youtube.com slash kotlin and uh, you can you know put on the reminder subscribe to the channel and put on the reminder uh, not to miss the session and we have the previous episodes somewhere in the playlists in the playlists we have this server side with kotlin webinar series and you get get to see uh, the the previous editions, uh, the previous editions of, for, the, for the series and uh, obviously the recordings of all the webinars we have hosted this year and uh, in the future as well. Uh, let's get back to the web page here. And uh, today we are talking about Kotlin DL library and uh, object detection and image recognition with Alexei and uh, let's welcome him to the studio. Hi. Hey, Alexei. Hi, Alexei Hi, is the maintainer of the library, and uh, he knows all inside out uh, about this library, how it's implemented, what it's using, uh, how to use this library, obviously. And he's going to teach us today with a few demos, right? Right. Yeah, perfect. So, how how, how do you feel today? Are uh, is it okay? All the like voices there. You you are healthy and you are pumped with the energy. <laughs> Yes, I'm full of beans. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm I'm going to give the stage to you in order to you know because this is the awesome session. I was waiting for it for a whole month, and uh, I hope it will be very interesting to the others as well. Let's switch the screens. Okay. Thank you, Anton. Thank you for uh, this introduction. And today I'm here uh, to make a, a simple intro in Kotlin DL usage. First of all, I need to tell a few words about what is Kotlin DL and what is Kotlin for data science. I'm working in uh, JetBrains uh, chapter related to the data science uh, tools uh, developed for the Kotlin. It's not only libraries, but and interactive editors, for example. Uh, I know that uh, many of backenders uses uh, uh, idea for uh, code editing, but in uh, science uh, communities, it's very uh, obvious to use Jupyter, uh, this Jupyter notebook or Apache Zeppelin uh, to work with data, to build the pipelines and uh, to explore the data, first of all. And uh, we developed uh, and support uh, Jupyter Kotlin kernel. And you could work with Kotlin in Jupyter Notebook. Uh, it uh, supports all main uh, Kotlin features and a few additional, especially for the data scientists. Uh, if you're interested, you could download the kernel. It's pretty stable and it works without bugs. I really like this, but uh, I, I was a lover of uh, idea but now the half of my time i spent in the jupiter kotlin kernel so uh also we support uh, the kotlin interpreter for the zeppelin but um, personally i'd prefer the first one and also you could find on this page uh the brief introduction to the uh overview sorry uh to the kotlin libraries which are released at this moment first of all the maltic this is a analog of a numpy library in the python ecosystem so uh, it's the support for multi-dimensional arrays in kotlin uh, i hope that in the next year it became uh it will become uh, a multi-platform library now it supports two different backends uh pure kotlin and native backend but it's not uh 
proposed as multi-platform library at this moment so the in the second row you could see the link to the kotlin dl library it's a uh, high level deep learning api written in kotlin and inspired by keras keras is the famous uh, and the i think the most popular library for deep learning in the python ecosystem and uh, uh, we both use this internally uh the TensorFlow runtime. Keras is the business logic written in the Python, and Kotlin DL is the same logic written in the Kotlin. So uh, it offers a lot of different APIs. And uh, today I uh, will not dig in the low level Keras API, and I want to make a simple introduction in the special easy API uh, for backend developers who don't know maybe so much uh, about deep learning, about um, back propagation, etc. But uh, if you really have a pain uh, to use um, um, black box models as a black boxes, uh, I think it's your choice. If you're interested in more uh, details, you could go to the Kotlin DL repository and uh, uh, work with different tutorials where you could find more information about low level APIs. Also, we uh, have a Kotlin bindings for the Apache Spark. It's uh, pretty popular in for Apache Spark developers. And uh, I think that uh, next few months we will have an integration for Kotlin DL in Kotlin for Apache Spark, uh, common usage, and also a lot of different libraries which could work together, especially uh, library Let's Plot. This is our plotting library for visualization. It's multi-platform. It's very interesting. You could use in your projects without any additional data science libraries. And of course, you could use both together uh, Java libraries and Kotlin libraries and, and uh, no big uh, problem to integrate both of them. But today I will concentrate uh, totally on the Kotlin uh, use cases. And at the end of the demo, I will show you um, my interpretation of Kotlin a KTOR integration. So uh, let's move to the Kotlin DL page. This is a Kotlin DL repository on the GitHub. Uh, and uh, if you want, uh, for example, to contribute, welcome. We have a, a lot of different cont contributions outside of the brains, uh, very valuable from the community. And also you could find here the first example uh, for the Lynette model, for example. And uh, if you need uh, to know more about that we have a full kotlin dl api reference you could read it if you like the full reference uh, the recordings of two previous webinars regarding to another apis and also a lot of different examples and tutorials written especially to the community members and of course um if you or need uh, to know more about different capabilities, for example, for run about running on GPU units, you could read the special section about that, about logging, for example, how to enable log4j uh, with newest version, <laughs> etc. Uh, and another different questions about limitation of the library because uh, it's under development and, uh, at this moment. And uh, please. Uh, if you have any issues, you could mm, add them to the GitHub or join to our Kotlin DL channel on the Kotlin Slack and ask any questions there. Uh, me or another developers from the community could answer on this question. Please join this channel. So um, let's move to the demo. I think it's a short introduction, <laughs> some marketing stuff. <laughs> I, I, I'd really like uh, to... Uh, new contributors we have a newbie tickets for them you could search on the, among the issues and find a few open uh, tickets uh, with a uh, special label newbie tickets or, or first issue or second level issue for advanced developers who know more about deep learning you could uh, write about it uh, that you want to assign a task on you and i will assign it to you and we can have a conversation about and this issue and uh, discuss uh, different ways or how to implement this issue and uh, i think that contribution could uh, help you to understand uh, more in deploring for example or you could create uh, any example and add them or could create a pet project to taste the uh, kotlin deal library and so on so uh, let's go to the demo uh, it will be a few examples uh, today uh, sorry, I don't like 
uh, uh, live coding. It will be prepared uh, code uh, snippets. And I will try to explain uh, API, which were used in these uh, demos. So, uh, Anton, did you see the screen? Did idea? Uh, yes, I can see it perfectly. Cool. So, uh, first of all, uh, we will work today with uh, pre-trained models. We will not train the model from scratch or from zero, and we will load these models from our model hub. Uh, we have uh, a two different model hubs. We need uh, to understand this moment and the first, because um, since the last release, we work not only with TensorFlow runtime under the hood and uh, could support not only TensorFlow models, but and models with another alternate format uh, with alternative runtime on Linux. Maybe you are not familiar with that, but believe me, uh, data scientists uh, know about both of this format on Linux. Uh, very popular in this year, and I think it uh, became more and more popular next years. TensorFlow is pretty stable, a lot of different models available for that. Uh, and uh, in my first example, I will show you how to download the model from the TensorFlow model hub. First of all, uh, we should um, to define the directory where the model uh, will be downloaded. So uh, here it will be a cache directory with a few pre-trained models with uh, two subdirectors on Linux and TensorFlow, and the models in different formats are downloaded in these directories. So uh, at this row, we could choose what kind of model we want to download from the model hub. So here we could uh, choose uh, that we want to download model from TF models uh, related to computer vision. Uh, and from the computer vision, we could choose uh, one for, uh, from available models. A lot of them are supported for computer vision, not only different ResNet, but MobileNet, NASNet Large, VGG, uh, DanceNet, and a lot of different architectures uh, which uh, were winners in famous Kaggle competitions for data scientists for last five years. Uh, these models are different uh, by the nature. Uh, it has uh, different architectures, uh, different uh, internal graph and path of calculation, different number of calculation units internally. Uh, these units are uh, known as neurons, and uh, each neuron could uh, have an input and could have an output uh, to get some information uh, in externally and transform it and go inside uh, of uh, the neuron. And for example, ResNet, uh near neural net could contain i don't know billions of different neurons uh and uh and for example if you're familiar with gpt uh, it's famous model from the last two years which could auto complete human sentences it contains uh i don't know uh, billions of billions uh, neurons uh, at this moment so, and all these um calculations uh it's a, just a lot of different additions and multiplications, just addition and mul multiplications uh, calculated on your CPU or GPU unit. So we uh, we will not go very deeply in the internals of deep learning. It's not the goal of this webinar, but uh, you could ask me, what uh, does it mean the number at the end of ResNet model? What does it mean? Usually it means the number of the, uh, large blocks of neurons. And for example, ResNet 50 has 50 of large blocks. And for example, ResNet 101 uh, has uh, twice more uh, computational units. Uh, it means that this neural network will be slower in prediction, but uh, it will be slower, but more accurate. For example, the prediction will be more accurate. Uh, for, um, the previous model, maybe ResNet 18, uh, will be very fast, but it could uh, make more errors 
uh, during the prediction on large data sets and could uh, more errors in image recognition. It could recognize wrong uh, in many cases, but it's very fast. For example, if you want to deploy this model on mobile, you will have no problems with that. Uh, but ResNet uh 152 will be 10 times slower but uh maybe uh on 10 persons uh accurate i think uh, it's trade off you should choose um for your case and you, we could experiment uh with this downloading different models for your image data so uh what's the goal of our uh demo we want to download the model, uh, obtain some uh, images uh, from the resources. I want to uh, display some images uh, located in the recognition uh, directory. The first one is me, just younger, and ten years. Uh, the second one is the I will uh, I will increase the size. Is the pigeon uh, a special type of cat? uh sport car probably a uh, very strange tree reminds me broccoli and it's very interesting uh, what will decide the neural network what it uh, what it will be uh broccoli or maybe tree we could we could see we are humans and we can understand that this is a tree but it's really remind uh the broccoli but it's tree and we could understand that very 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 strange and uh, um uh, a picture of goldfish with a low resolution uh, and uh, low resolution beer uh, and uh, high resolution goldfish too. Uh, and it's very interesting how, how uh, the neural network will recognize uh, objects on these images. So let's run the first example. And on the model, uh, we have only two methods. First one could uh, take as in, as the input uh, the image file, uh, obtain it from the resources and uh, return uh, recognized objects uh, as a result. Uh, and we have a second one uh, method uh, which predicts a top K object uh, and we could decide how many um, objects we could return. It means that the first result will be uh, decision of the prediction with highest probability the second one one with lower probability and so on um, sorted by the uh, probability or what is this on the image so let's run the example and let's see uh, what will be predicted for all, all these images just a second uh, maybe we need uh, some time to download the model okay we could see a few different predictions for the first image i will show you again uh, it was a human in glasses we could we could uh, see that no humans uh, was detected on the image and i will explain later what's happened here so but the jersey i don't know sunglasses uh, were found maybe it's a good result uh, on the second image uh, a few different uh, kind of um, birds were found uh, as i see and the third a few different cats uh, the neural network uh, thinks that this is egyptian cat maybe probably i don't know really uh, kinds of cats it's just cat for me <laughs> uh sport car uh on this image was predicted uh broccoli yeah neural network decided that this is broccoli uh, it doesn't understand that it's just a tree uh but in the image six and e image uh eight we uh, could see the goldfish in both cases maybe with different probabilities because uh this uh, image has real lower resolution but neural network can understand what is here because because uh neural network was trained on special data set uh, this uh learn knowledge uh some knowledge some facts from this data set and this data set contains a lot of pictures of different goldfish with low resolution with high resolution but e this uh, contains different 
pictures of human but all of them not were uh mm, sorry all of them have no label as a human just different labels like postman like a policeman uh, different uh, mm, people with different professions and that's a problem because uh, the neural network trained on the data set uh, without images with label human could not recognize a human could not return a label human but if you will train your neural network on the alternative data set uh, or maybe if you have a, a few a small smaller data set with for example 100 or 1000 pictures of human with label of human label with uh, human label uh, you could uh, transfer learning um, from the uh, for example resnet data set and train only part of neural network only small part uh, maybe a last few layers uh, we and it will on the newest data set and it will help you to recognize the humans this process known as transfer learning or uh, fine tuning or the model maybe you're familiar with this term if not don't worry uh, you could go uh, to our tutorials and uh, run the experiments uh, to help the neural network recognize new classes uh, with new labels which uh, was a uh, known for the famous image net uh, data set uh, all another image recognition uh, models are trained on this data set too. And that's the problem. You couldn't use all these models for personal recognition, but for example, for goldfish or for another um, probably 21,000 classes, uh, it could be used. Very lot different labels uh, on these images, but they, they all of them has very, fine grained and uh, for example not just cats not just dogs but uh egyptian cat or maybe tiger cat or maybe lynx you should understand the granularity of the labels in this data set so uh let's move on to the another model and to another example to the object detection it was just image recognition when we are trying to recognize only one object on the model if you will have a few different objects uh in the sorry on the image if you have a few different objects uh, on the image uh, the image recognition models will not work and we need another type of models which could understand each object maybe for example you have uh, 100 persons uh, of 100 cars on the image you could understand where uh, all of them are located on the image to understand the bounding box for each of them and uh, understand the coordinates of this bounding box and uh, uh, another type of the models object detection models could return the list of, of, of detected objects with boundary boxes and the, in the next examples we we will try to uh, make some experiments on the another type of images with a very big number of objects and we'll try to visualize these models so uh, here we will work with another model hub on an X model hub uh, where we could download uh, the another model SSD we have two different syntaxes uh, to download model you could go um, to the onanix models to the object detection a chapter sub chapter to the ssd models and obtain the pre-trained models but also you could use the same syntax like here uh, go to the model hub as i will demonstrate it for example we could just type model hub go to the onanix models go to object detections to the ssd model and download it so uh, i will run example and explain uh, a few rows of code uh, below here we could do the same we uh, obtain the image file uh, from the detection folder i will show you uh, this image 
This is just a street with a few persons on the street, a few cars, traffic lights, and a few of persons are on the bicycles. So let's uh, try to understand uh, uh, where it's located, where where are the persons, uh, and the ob the SSD model, single shot detector, it's known like single shot detector model, could understand that. Uh, we could call detect objects model, or sorry, uh, detect objects uh, method on the detection model, uh, the pass the image file, uh, and uh, we could decide how many detected objects should be returned. Uh, all of them, the model could return, I don't know, maybe 1,000 or 2,000 of different objects, uh, but with very uh, different uh, probabilities, with scores. And uh, we prepared the sorted list of uh, scored objects uh, in which model uh, is sure which are really, uh, which, which models uh, have the highest rank and we could be sure that uh, all these uh, objects uh, are really detected but it could find uh, objects with very low probability i think we uh, shouldn't uh, use this information and cut uh, the end of this list and you could uh, pass the uh, size of the list via top k parameter also, in this uh, example, we just uh, print 100 of sorry, uh, 100 of um, found objects. Uh, first of all, uh, the car was found with very high probability, different bicycles, persons, traffic lights, and etc. Uh, also, we could find the debug information about the model. Uh, we could find uh, here if you familiar with that. Uh, information about on an X format about the shape of input and output of the model it and uh, if you um, work uh, with uh, deep learning models firstly maybe you are not familiar with with these terms the shape is very important for example uh, this model has a, an input shape uh, 1,200 uh, by 1,200. You need to provide the image of this size. But what if you have uh, the alternative size of images? Under the hood, we will resize uh, you images with different sizes to the input of the model. But if you will use, I don't know, the row on an X Java API, you need to resize all manage all images manually. I don't know via different uh, tools, which could help you with resize. It involves uh, you couldn't uh, you couldn't do this manually because it involves different maths uh, for resizing images, different interpolation, uh, mathematical methods, and so on. I really suggest you uh, to use or maybe our, our Kotlin API with uh, resizing under the hood, or maybe use our image preprocessing DSL, which will be demonstrated later for resizing images. So uh, the output of the model uh, is described here. Uh, you will obtain uh, four, uh, maybe it's not understandable information, but I just explained uh, that you will obtain four different pieces of data, which will be post-processed uh, under the hood too. And uh, we proposed uh, easy API for that because in reality, the model returns uh, uh, four multi-dimensional arrays without labels, without nothing, and uh, we, uh, in Kotlin DL, uh, parsed it for you, <laughs> just for you, uh, to avoid uh, additional work on your side. So uh, let's try to visualize the boundary boxes using um, Swing. Sorry, I'm not a uh, uh, JavaFX or maybe Compose developer. Maybe it could be displayed on the Compose. I'm not sure. Uh, I have not yet time to taste the compose on for the backends. I don't know how it works, but I'm trying to do it with Swing components, JPanel. Sorry for that if you're a hater of JPanel, but I'd really like this. <laughs> and let's run the second example, which differs only in this row where we built um, under the hood the pre processing uh, for you images. We need to resize it. 
you could hear the pretty Kotlin DSL for loading images, for transforming images, for transforming tensors under the hood. All this is built in to the our uh, model hub models. Uh, so uh, I think this code will be available after the demo. And if you need to visualize using the swing, you could uh, download the code and uh, use it in your pet projects. But I just run the example and believe me, it works. I hope the swing G panel will be open it in a few seconds. So here we he, we could see a very lot different rectangles uh and uh, with different labels and i want to reduce the number because uh it's around of a few hundreds of different boxes here let's just reduce the top k parameter to the for example uh 20 uh object with the highest uh probability let's just rerun this and probably we could see something interesting uh in this example so here not so many boundary boxes we could see that the traffic light was found the person the another person a few persons probably a car a bicycle and uh, a few cars uh with the different uh, probabilities at the end of the oh uh, yet another traffic light here in this zone so uh you could obtain for example you could obtain all of the results uh for all detected objects and filter on your site and decide what you want to visualize uh just a second uh, later in the uh, uh, last example, I will uh, propose the approach how to filter this and, um, for example, use different colors to uh, differ the bicycles from the uh, persons if you're not familiar with Sphinx development. So uh, that's all for the um, just console examples. Maybe Anton, if you have any questions for this part, or maybe in chat if you have any comments we we don't really have like a lot of questions yet i think there was one <clears throat> question if there is any other toolkit than swing or jfx for visualizing any of the desktop stuff but well you have mentioned uh, compose so yeah. that's one option and there was a heated discussion if someone uh, would like to use kotlin for data science or deep learning instead of uh python for instance but mm -hmm. that this is like a philosophical one we can take it for later or if you want to mm -hmm. discuss now yes see, uh, I, I see the question in the chat so um, uh the lot of different interesting question related to the education etc so uh i agree with comments about different uh tools uh, for the um, Visualization, uh, we have a few experiments with Batik, uh, with HTML visualization, but today I uh, prefer uh, the Swing for fast uh, displaying, but uh, we are not limited only by Swing. Um, and also we are working on the integration um, of the, uh, for, of integration of this visualization for the um, Jupyter Notebook, I think is the pretty one the best place for visualization uh, capabilities and uh, in many cases on the backends you don't need to visualize something maybe for debugging purposes only um, but I agree that it will be very interesting to work with Compose Desktop I see that it has a very big progress uh, last time uh, I think that the next demo I will try to do this thank you uh, I, I will uh, what programming languages will you recommend for a college student at this moment, I honestly say that uh, if you want to learn deep learning, the Python is the best choice at this moment. The Kotlin DL and another Kotlin projects at this moment are good for experiments, maybe for working with a few special models which are exported uh, and available for this moment. We uh, hope that um, it will close the gap 
and could help for democratization of deep learning knowledge and availability for JVM developers first of all. But at this moment, it's very bad situation that uh, it's it's very uh, hard to run the inference or train from the scratch neural networks. Uh, for JVM backenders, but you could do a few first steps with Kotlin DL2, a few simple uh, simple neural networks, or for example, if you have uh, data which uh, are tabular or could be used with data frame, I think the Kotlin DL is enough uh, to train simple models at this moment too. Uh, give me a second, so I will answer a few questions from the chat. Uh, a few of them is is there support for transformer models uh at this moment we are concentrated of, on for the models uh for the image recognition object detection domain and uh transformers are only started uh, uh this year in this domain and uh, i hope that transformers uh, uh, for nlp models will support it next year and i think that in maybe q1 or maybe in q2 and next uh, two releases so, um, just a few. Will Kotlin DL be added in JetBrains Academy? Any beginners level tutorials or code labs on this? It's very interesting questions uh, we discuss internally in our team, uh, how we could help uh, with educational things. I think it's very good idea, probably beginner level tutorials integrated uh, maybe in uh, JetBrains Academy, it's a good uh, choice and step for the next year or two. Thank you for this question. It's, it's a very good idea. We will think about that. Um, okay, uh, I, I will answer another questions at the end of the session. Uh, I will return to a few of them. And I think, Anton, you could help me with choosing of questions. Okay. Okay. So, Mm, so uh, let's move on uh, to the KTOR and the Kotlin DL common usage. Also, uh, I only started my experiments with KTOR. Uh, before that, I have very big experience with different uh, Java uh, libraries for building REST APIs with Spring and etc. cetera. Uh, it's my first baby steps with KTOR, but not uh, in the web application development. And I found that KTOR is pretty good for building client server applications, but maybe probably uh, I use not the common pattern of KTOR usage. Uh, Please send your recommendation or pull request to this demo code. It's just uh, some disclaimer for that. The first example uh, will be for image recognition too. We will have a simple um, server part and I will start with server part. We will obtain, mm, we will download the model from the model hub. It will be a model with uh, pretty small size, mobile net version two. So we will run Netty server and obtain the image file from the client. We will save it to the server files directory. It will emulate, I don't know, our server database. We will uh, predict uh, something uh, on the given image file and just respond the text with uh, top five uh, predicted objects. I think that we, we could run a server it will be run on the on this port just to check that the client will be run on the same port oh it's okay so we will uh, run the client which we will which will take our image uh, eight from the recognition folder for example with the goldfish we we saw this image on the previous examples and let's see what will happens with the client? Oh, sorry. Uh, let's run the client. Well, just uh, goldfish objects uh, was recognized and uh, goldfish, rock beauty, tench, terpane, macau, <laughs> I don't know what is it, uh, were returned. So that's just the first example how to build a simple image recognition service. Uh, of course, you could build a um, REST API with JSON returning, but uh, it, it, it's for the future examples. Um, so in the next example, we will do the same, but with object detection. 
we will run uh, on the another port uh, object detection example, which will get uh, the file uh, image file from the client and uh, will try to detect objects. But in this, but but here we will try not just return the text information, but we will try to filter first of all to filter. Uh, detected objects and uh, leave just cars, persons and bicycles, uh, uh, objects with uh, these class labels. After that, we will run the transformation of uh, the image and uh, add uh, at the background uh, boundary boxes for all uh, the found objects and pass back, uh, return back the processed image and save it on the client side to the client files so let's run the server uh ktor have very good uh, support for the uh, multi-part data it's very easy to work with images i really like this okay i think oh we just stopped the previous server uh this server was run and we could we could run the client uh now i want to run the image 2 from the detection folder the same uh, from the street and let's run the client uh, i will open the client files now it's empty server files contains contains another image let's run the client and we'll see what's happened in server files and, and client files folders so let's wait a few seconds the model is downloaded so it's finished and we could find the first image without boundary boxes it was processed and we could see the box different different boundary boxes the red for persons the green for cars and the blue for bicycles uh it was made with j graphics 2d power <laughs> on the background too uh, and uh, we could find the same in the client files folder so it was obtained from the server and saved to the client files folder and th it was a second example uh, how to return the image with ktor power uh, in the client code i will return to the client code if you're not familiar how to obtain the image we uh, send it via submit form with binary data is the official way in ktor documentation how to send the image data and uh, we could uh, we have I, I i could not find the ipi for obtaining uh, the images but we could obtain just bytes and write these bytes uh, from response uh, to the file and it will be exactly the image file without additional uh, purposes so and the last one but i think it's very good example i'm very proud about that because it's real website with html it's just uh, an example which uh, will use the same uh, the, the same model SSD model which could uh, detect objects but uh, it will return um, the page where you could uh, choose a few parameters for example top K and print the labels which should be displayed uh, on the image uh, their boundary boxes will be displayed on the image uh, it uh, looks like a uh, handling of different per data. For example, how to, uh, with KTOR, it's very easy to obtain um, different parameters from the web form, uh, from the post uh, HTTP request, um, uh, like a, a form item, top K and class label names. And we could generate um, a simple HTML form with a few inputs, for the top K parameter with a file input for your image uh, and the text input for your different class labels separated by probably by comma. Uh, so let's run the server and I will show you how it works and just of the previous server. 
so I think it's run and we could go to the browser and open the our pretty HTML form. I really like this. <laughs> no JavaScript, no CSS, just pure HTML. And we could choose a file. I want to choose just second uh, from or not just from recognition but from detection folder something from uh wall street <laughs> uh i i will show you this image here the same image here this is a wall street very large number of persons here and let's return to our website so uh, let's um, filter stir uh, 100 uh, top key um, objects and i want to detect just person uh, objects with label person or probably with label car okay let's press the button detect objects it uh, makes the post http request to the backend and uh, uh, it returns the each with uh, persons i hope and cars, if there are any cars. I think uh, a very big number of person was found. Also, uh, the uh, object detection models could return very large rectangles um, if uh, it couldn't uh, understand uh, how many uh, objects uh, in this area it happens. Don't worry. In many, uh, it's very um, advanced tips for this filter uh, and uh, reject uh, very large boxes. In this case, we could, for example, reject uh, boxes with a uh, very large difference between uh, X coordinates, for example. Uh, just filtering the code. Or we, we don't filter this in the API, but it's just uh, usual tips for object detection models. So uh, we... Oh, also it detects these things like a person's probably it could be but it could be a person but i'm not sure what is this but maybe it reminds the man in the head i'm not sure uh, probably uh, the human eyes couldn't understand what is this but object detection model thinks that all of them are persons and no cars were detected in this image Let's try with another one. Probably with this street. I really like this. It has a lot of persons and different uh, traffic lights. I'm not sure about tra traffic light, probably. Uh, and probably a few truck on the street truck and umbrella. Let's run with very large number of top K. I will show you on the image before we will see the result. Uh, it's very interesting street image. There are a lot of different car, clocks, uh, different trees, plants, umbrellas on the street, and probably a few trucks, not only cars. And let's return uh, to the obtained result. So, uh, we have a color differentiation here. Uh, the object detection model returns a few cars for us, umbrellas, uh, a few cars again. A lot of persons were found. I think that dangerous uh, big data system, which could understand all about persons on the streets could be developed with this dangerous model. We should worry about and think about that. I don't know. But this is a simple SSD detector. Uh, I think uh, it could be used for uh, simple uh, video traffic, uh, which could be generated from the streets or for the home pet projects. If you need to detect something in your corridor, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but uh, for it, it could, this model could detect just 80 different classes. Uh, it's not so much, and uh, it's very common classes like persons, like cars, like tracks or traffic lights, and most of them related to the streets because it was trained on 
the images uh, mostly taken from the street cameras and uh, if you need alternative model for object detection uh, you need to find something on the internet uh, probably convert it to the on an extra tensorflow format and trying to load it with the kotlin dl capabilities uh, also i think that a few new object detection models will be added in the nearest future in the next release uh, currently we are work working on this and i think three or four like yolo or uh alternative ssd detectors with uh, different backbones uh backbone models will be added too and uh, uh, the famous mod currently we're working on the model uh famous like a uh, decatron uh decatron the De detectron uh from the google uh which could detect more classes uh not only from the street images but uh, something in offices if you need uh it could work with faces and so on also uh in our model hubs we have a few uh, models um for the face uh, recognition which could uh, which could understand the um, key points of your face and also we are going to add support for pose estimation Ooh, also um, it means that model could find the key points of your body uh, when you move uh, somewhere uh, or maybe dance it's very interesting uh, a lot of these models are available now in the browser with tensorflow gs projects capabilities and i think uh, that uh, we will export a few of these models uh, like movenet and the next release too uh, and i hope to that we could conduct a new webinar in next quarter uh, to show the capabilities of this model too with kotlin dl uh, and maybe the pretty sites with ktor and that's all uh, for the demos if you have any questions related to this demo uh, please ask in the chat and i think we have a time to answer the questions right anton yeah we have a few minutes i think and uh, there were a few interesting questions one obvious question that we probably discussed with you before the mm -hmm. session is that uh, whether or not this library could be used with Android. And, uh, well, you have the answer for that. Yeah, uh, it's it's very good question. Uh, at this moment, uh, it could not be used with Android. And uh, it's a very difficult situation in Android ecosystem. Uh, it has um, a lot of different deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch on an X runtime and uh, diff different ones uh, have mm -hmm. limited support for a subset of models for mobile. Uh, part of them, uh, for example, Google uh, at this time were working on um, API uh, like MLKit, uh, maybe, and different Android ML uh, with uh, Kotlin uh, API too. Uh, at this moment, uh, we are testing different uh, approaches, um, how it could be integrated, uh, how it could be integrated on Android. But first of all, for simple inference, we should wait uh, our uh, implementation uh, for Multic for Android. I think that next year we will have support uh, for multi-platform, for mobile multi-platform, I hope too. And it will be a uh, building block, which could be used for running uh, our models um, uh, in the Android. So now you have a very long pipeline to convert uh, Kotlin DL models via TF Lite, for example, or on an X uh, runtime for mobile to run them uh, on the Android devices. And there is no big difference uh, to running it with Kotlin DL capabilities or just directly with uh, these projects. In both cases, uh, all these projects have a very limited API for Java and for the Kotlin 2. And I think it's only start of the very, very, very big road uh, to building the multi-platform, mobile multi-platform libraries, uh, not just only for Android, but for Android and iOS together so we right. just uh, at the start of this road good 
so there was one technical issue. I guess mm -hmm. uh, someone tried uh, your examples from GitHub and uh, mm -hmm. the server didn't start. I, ex I, I think uh, something with a occupied port or maybe a timeout, it's hard to say without the logs. Uh, so I'm not sure. It's better to check with, uh, with the team, with Kator team maybe even in Kotlin Slack about this thing that you have this demo, you start and it doesn't start. So try Kotlin Slack for this kind of questions. Uh, yeah, yes, maybe maybe I uh, set up something wrong, but I today uh, has uh, the same issue. Then I run my example on the Mac OS. Uh, the KTR, uh, the Netty server uh, wasn't start. I don't know the reason. I didn't profile this, uh, but uh, now currently I run my demos on the Windows. It runs <laughs> right. So let's let's wrap up with, with the last very philosophical question that we had in in the beginning, mm -hmm. and we had a heated discussion about that. Why would you use Kotlin for deep learning? Like uh, <laughs> even Did, like I, we know we, you you mentioned that this library is like a very experimental one yet, and it's very young, and there is a long road for developing. But imagine tomorrow this library is stable. Why would anyone use this library instead of something in Python? Yeah. Uh, it's a very good question, and uh, a few days ago, somebody created the same discussion uh, here. Uh, it's not, in my humble opinion, it's not the competition. And then I visited uh, one large uh, conference. I heard very, very good words about AI democratization. What does it mean, in my humble opinion? Uh, I just say. Uh, you have a very, very, very good uh, Python ecosystem with a lot of different uh, frameworks. And in reality, I think in the you know, next 10 years, Kotlin in data science could not be a competitor with this ecosystem. We are friends, maybe later we could be an enemy, but just friends at this time. And we are trying to help GVM developers, Kotlin developers, to do the same in the Kotlin ecosystem, not remove the Python. I strongly recommend to work together in Python. For example, you could train um, the model in the Keras framework and load this model in Kotlin DL to make a transfer lowering. It's very easy. Or for example, to train the model in PyTorch, uh, convert in, in on an X format and load with Kotlin DL and run um, in you GVM with you GVM runtime, for example, it's just a way to run uh, and train the models on the GVM side. It's not the competition. You shouldn't remove the Python from your table. I think uh, some of my colleagues uh, disagree with me, but it's my opinion because it's not my first AI framework. Uh, I work it on different components, and all these cases, this question uh, was raised: Why we should develop yet another framework? Because we can, first of all, and the second one, because our users have the pain currently. We have a pain with on an X runtime because on X runtime doesn't include pre-processing and post-processing written uh, in NumPy library. We just provide our users not with, for example, with easy API, not just models, not just raw models, but internally it keeps a lot of codes of pre-processing and port processing which you shouldn't write from scratch you could get these with our models together uh, in in another case you could just uh, use on an or tensorflow java apis in your code but you should have deal with porting of python code manually by yourself right. that does there are uh, i think uh, medium answer on your question for, for me it's like good to have a choice it's uh, yes yes, yes. And, and exactly that i if i'm building some uh, pet pet project with kotlin already and i want some functionality from you know deep learning or data science i want those libraries uh, i i i wouldn't rewrite the whole stack the whole application stack into some other technology just to use this functionality so uh that was Sorry, a very uh, good... yeah uh, uh, could I, I yet uh, add yet one comment i remember the time when um, 
we have on project different uh, special SQL developers uh, and SQL was uh, like a black box and you should uh, work uh, uh, together with SQL team but it it was like a special skill uh, for special uh, sub chapter of team but I uh, the same now for the data science team but the artifacts of their work of researcher work it just the models and models in many cases could be used without data scientists especially if these models are prepared and wrapped in frameworks like Kotlindale but not only in Kotlindale uh, for example I could highly recommend for example Amazon framework DGL which supports uh, which ha which has a Java API and uh, could be strongly recommend for Java developers and has uh, different NLP models it's not just Kotlindale but it's a ecosystem extremely developed last two years right thank you cool so uh it's a wrap we are out of time and uh thank you alexei for the nice demo uh let's publish the github repository the latest uh and greatest in in your demos as well to, to github and it's going to be in the description below so if you watch till the end uh you you, you get to know that the link is there and uh, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. And we are we will have some more sessions coming up uh, this and next week. So goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.